Welcome back to part two of painting our Privateer Press Sorsha bust. And in this part, we're gonna be painting red and we do have a whole lot of red to paint. Uh, we have the armor and we have our cloak jacket thing. And uh, I decided to try something a little bit experiment uh, as it were. Uh, we are base coating with Alejo model color flat red and uh, the two different areas, I want them to look different. So normally you'd use two different shades of red, but I wanted to try an experiment here. Uh, so I base coated them both with the flat red and we're going to highlight and shade them differently to see what kind of variety we can get uh, from the original matching base color. So we're gonna start with her jacket and we're gonna start with the shade. And for that, we're using flat red mixed with some violet red, which if you remember is the same shade color that we used on the face. Uh, there's no relation to that. I'm not trying to match things. It just happened to be the color that seemed to be most appropriate here. After a number of layers of that previous mix, I then mixed in some black ink to it and proceeded to add in the more recessed shadows. Before moving on to the highlights, I want to blend in our shade work a little bit better. So we go back to our original flat red, uh, have it very thin and just blending in, feathering in those edges of that shade color. Uh, just reapplying the red to the base coat. So we have a nice smooth transition between those two colors. And uh, again, this is an extra step, but since we're spending the extra time to get a really good figure, uh, it's, it's a, I consider a necessary step because it's going to give us a really smooth transition. As we work on the highlights, two things we have to keep in mind. Uh, first of all, the key to painting red is to not over highlight it. Uh, red's an interesting color in nature. Uh, as the sun hits it, it doesn't turn pink, it doesn't turn orange. Uh, it just kind of becomes a more intense color of red. So uh, that's what we're trying to achieve here. Uh, the other issue is because we, once again, are working in a larger scale. So we have to tone down the highlights. So uh, we're not going to have a huge jump of in contrast in this red here because of those two factors. So what we're using to highlight is Vallejo Model Color Vermilion, which is a new color for me went out and bought a few different shades of red specifically for this project uh, because I did want something that was more intense red that would be more appropriate for this project. Our next color is a mix of Vermilion with Vallejo model color Scarlet. Again, this is a very slight step in our shades of red. and. Uh, Red also, the issue with painting red is it's a very transparent color. So we are using many, many layers here. Paint is still very thin as normal. Uh, it's just a matter of applying uh, more and more layers. And then our final highlight color, just straight scarlet. And as always, of course, we're thinning the paints. Uh, as you start working your way towards those final highlights, you can use your paint a little bit thicker. So painting any sharp edges is easier. Uh, this case, we're not going too thick because there's no real sharp edge or folds to paint. We have mostly uh, large, wide, flat surfaces. And you can see now the shoulder pads, those are still the flat red. You can see all the areas that we highlighted. And you can see there's not a huge difference between them. Again, uh, we really don't want to over highlight the red. Now 
For the armor, we are starting with the shade, and we have a mix of hull red mixed with flat red, about a 50-50 mix. And placing in the shadow areas, and I immediately knew I had a bit of a problem. While I keep mentioning that this figure has a bunch of large, wide surface areas, uh, the armor is the widest and the largest, uh, and trying to paint those areas in with layers is really difficult and it just wasn't working out. So uh, I had to scrap this idea and go with something a little bit different. Instead, I decided to break out the oil paints. Uh, oil paints are a perfect candidate in a situation like this because you could have perfectly smooth blends. You can blend them all day long blend them completely away or wipe them all away and start again if necessary. So on a large surface area like this, oil paints are perfect. So what I did was I painted a thin line of a raw umber in towards the recesses of the shoulder pads here. And then I just used a dry brush and blended them in, working our way towards the center of the shoulder pad. And a little bit of oil paint goes a long way, as you can see here. Uh, I'm trying not to, of course, bring it all the way towards the center, but we're, we're bringing it towards the center without hitting the center, is what I mean to say. But uh, yeah, just blending them away, and when our brush gets too much paint on it, we wipe off a little bit uh, on paper towel to dry it up. And also, you can see here, we're working in the recesses underneath the shoulder pad. Uh, and if we make any mistakes, we can clean it up with some odorless thinner, which we'll get to in just a moment. So as I mentioned, a little bit of oil paint goes a long way, and if it goes too long, we have to do some cleanup work on it. And for that, we're using odorless thinner and a brush, and we're just softening the oil paint, removing it a little bit, uh, from the base coat areas, areas that uh, you know it went a little bit too far. And the trick here is you basically just want odorless thinner fumes on your brush. And I mean it here. Uh, dip your brush in odorless thinner and wring the hell out of it. Pretend you're like dry brushing and just rub, rub that brush back and forth on some paper towels because if you have a whiff of too much odorless thinner on your brush, it's going to completely remove the oil paints like a cleaner, which is not what we want to do. We want to soften the oil paint and carefully blend it in. This is also a good example of why uh, oil washes are very effective because uh, you can put them on and the odorless thinner will take them right off. So. A few of these areas, like underneath the shoulder pad, I put some oil paint in there. I uh, went a little bit heavier with the odorless thinner and just wiped it off the base coat, left it in the recesses. Very clean cut, shade cut in those areas. So now we need to highlight the red and decided to continue with the oil paints since uh, they are very effective for this type of painting. Uh, going with a cadmium red hue and just a drop already placed on certain areas and just blending it in. Once again, we're going back to the dry brush and wiping it off on a paper towel as necessary once it gets too clouded with paint and just blending it in to the uh, surrounding area. And for our next highlight, I've mixed in some Windsor Yellow to our Cadmium Red Hue. And you see here, perfect example of adding the highlights before they are blended in, since they were a little bit hard to see in that previous portion. And once again, a little bit goes a long way. You can always add more, uh, but definitely go lighter because it spreads out quite a bit. Now, you may be asking, 
why I said not to over highlight red and now I'm using a very light orange color. Well, we can make an exception for oil paints because they get blended into the base coat color and they blend so well. Uh, you can see right here how that color is softening and is blending into the red and becoming a, a lighter red color rather than uh, staying orange as what would happen if we used an acrylic paint. Once again, we are skipping ahead a little bit. I decided to include the battle damage in this part. Uh, and for that, we are using Vallejo Metal Color Burnt Iron mixed with some Vallejo Metal Color German Gray to tone it down just a little bit. And we're adding just little scratches with a teeny, teeny, tiny brush. And then to highlight the chips, some Vallejo Game Color Cold Gray. And remember, chips are kind of the opposite of regular highlighting because we want to give the impression it's a, a deep groove into the armor. So we want the highlight to go on the bottom, uh, like the light hits it and uh, you know catches an edge, like a, an edge of a fold. So uh, that's what we're doing here. Also, I could have done a little bit more battle damage on the armor. I went pretty light, uh, figuring you know she's a commander, she's going to have decent quality armor replacing it when necessary so she can continue to look good on the battlefield. And that is it for painting red on our Commander Sorsha bust. Two different ways, one acrylics, one using oils. And in part three we will cover the rest of the figure. I hope everyone is liking the new format for these videos, and in case you haven't been paying attention, I'm trying not to do one long video on a bunch of subjects. I'm trying to index them and keep on one topic for each video, one or two topics. Uh, and the reason for that is I get a lot of questions on how to paint X, Y, or Z. Uh, and there'll be subjects that I've covered in the past, but they'll be buried in some perhaps unrelated half hour video. So I'm trying to make these easier for people to go back and index or search for uh, without having to watch 20 minutes of unrelated stuff to what they want to learn. So that's the reason why I'm doing things like skin in one video, red in this one, and the third part will be fur and metal. Uh, but I uh, hope you enjoyed this one. As I said, one more part will finish up the rest of the figure, and then we'll be done with Sorsha. So thanks for watching. Bye-bye. 47 Keebler elves were killed today when a light plane plunged into their tree. E.L. Fudge remains in critical condition. <laughs>